guys, it's Mrs. Kemmerer again, and I'm back for day two of week one for unit one of foundations. Let's go ahead and get started. Echo me. A, apple, a. Ah. E, ed, a. Ah. I, itch, i. Eh. O, octopus, a. Ah. U, up, a. Ah. W, h, whistle, w. C H chin ch. S H ship sh. T H thumb f. C K sock k. All right, great job. So today we're going to be reviewing again a few things that we've learned at the end of last year. Let's take a look. If I were to give you the word sock, go ahead and write that down. You can use a piece of paper and a pencil, or you can use a dry erase board. Sock. 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 I hope that when you wrote the word sock, you used CK at the end of the word. Now, if I were to say to you, what says K? You might say C, K, or C, K. If I was to ask you what says W, you would probably say, Mrs. Kemmerer, the letter W says W, and W, H says W. What we're going to be talking about right now is when we use C, K versus C or K by itself. Now, you'll notice in the word sock, sock, that it ends in our digraph C, K. But why? Do you remember? CK is used at the end of a word after a short vowel. Say that with me. CK is used at the end of the word after a short vowel. So we have the word sock. It ends in the k sound, which is after a short vowel, and it's at the end of the word. Sock. Now I'm going to clear this. Let's go ahead and build the word milk. M -i -l -k, milk. And you write that along with me, okay, guys? M -i -o -k. Now I hear k at the end. What is it going to be? A C, a K, or a CK? I hope you picked K. Now we can't use CK at the end because it's not the last consonant. There's an L before it. So it would have to come directly after the short vowel. Let's build a few more words so you can see what I mean. Let's build the word kick. K, I, K, kick. Here we go. K, I, K. Now look at K, I, short vowel. K is coming at the end. That's a CK. All right? Short vowel, k comes after it, kick, ck. Let's build the, build the word quack, quack, quack. You write it with me. Quack, quack. Short vowel ends in ck because the k sound comes directly after the short vowel, quack. One more word. Can you build the word chuck, ch, uck, chuck? Here we go. Ch, uck. What's it gonna be? You betcha. C K. Short vowel. Next sound is k at the end of the word. It's a C K. Now we have a new sound to learn. Okay. When we see this, it is T C. H. We say T C H catch ch. Let's try that again. T C H catch ch. T C H says ch just like C H chin ch. T C H catch ch. So let's go ahead and write another word. I'm going to build it. You're going to write it. I'm going to build the word catch. Let's tap. Catch, catch. Here we go. K -a -ch. Catch. 
C A T C H. In the word catch, what says ch? I hope you said T C H. Now, this is not a digraph. Even though TCH lives down here with our other digraphs, di means two. All right, so that's why WH, two letters, CH, two letters, SH, two letters. But TCH, this card has three letters on it. This is called a trigraph. Di means two, tri means three. And you can almost think of it like a triangle. One, two, three, tri. So TCH is a trigraph. So TCH is a trigraph and it is only used after a short vowel. Okay? Only used after a short vowel. Let's go ahead and write some more words. Let's build the word pitch. P itch. Pitch. Here we go. P I ch. Short vowel. Then we hear ch. So it is T C H. How about the word match? M A ch. Match. Let's write it. M A ch. Again, if it comes after a short vowel, it's T C H. Ch. How about the word stitch? S T I C H. Stitch. Write that along with me, guys. So if it's a short vowel, itch, you already know what's going to come next. Our trigraph, T-C-H. Make sure you've got all those written. Now, I'm going to give you guys a couple of words that I want you to write, and you're going to have to decide if you're going to use C-H or T-C-H, okay? So you're going to write them, and then I'm going to build them. Hopefully, we're on the same page. Let's go ahead and write the word itch. 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 Write it. Itch. Itch. Remember, has to come after a short vowel, and it's T-C-H. Next word. Bench. B -e -n -ch. B-E-N-C-H. Bench. Write it. Bench. B-E-N-C-H. What did you write there? I hope you used a C-H. Now, remember the rule is it's only TCH if it comes directly after the short vowel. We have a consonant here, so we can't use a TCH. It has to be the CH card, okay? Next word, patch. P -a -ch. Patch. Write it. My turn. P -a -ch. A -ch. Short vowel, then I hear the ch. TCH. All right, let's do one more. Pinch. P -i -n -ch. Pinch. Write it. P -i -n -ch. Ch. If you used a CH for that one instead of a TCH, go ahead and kiss your brain because you are correct. We've got a consonant right after the I, so it's short vowel, consonant, digraph, not our trigraph. So how do you spell ch after a short vowel? T-C-H. You got it. I'm going to clear these cards, and I'm going to build two words, so get ready. The first word I'm going to build is scrap. All right? And you can write this with me if you want. Scrap. Scrap. Now, just as I'm stretching these sounds out, as I'm looking for the letter tiles, you should be doing that too when you're trying to write words that you're not really quite sure how you spell. The next word I'm going to write is match. Here we go. Match. 
Now go ahead and take a look at both of those. You're going to notice that in each of these two words, there are three consonants together. Okay, when we look at the first word, scrap, we have S C R as scrap. But guys, this is a consonant blend because each consonant keeps its own sound. You can hear the s, k, and er. So this is a consonant blend. When we look at match, yes, there are three consonants together there too, but they don't each keep their own sound. They make a new sound. They say ch, which is why that one is a trigraph, okay? And the trigraph becomes a new sound. In the blend, each consonant keeps its original sound. Now, if we were doing this lesson in school, we would be opening up our student notebooks and going directly to the spelling rules section so that you could add the rules for CH and TCH, but we're not. When we come back, we'll get to that. For now, I want you to write CH, crunch, and pinch. Practice writing crunch and pinch. And for TCH, I'd like you to practice writing pitch and latch. And go ahead and add those to your paper or board now. Crunch, pinch, pitch, latch. Four words for you to practice writing down. And the next thing we're going to talk about, and this is going to be our final thing for today, are our foundation's trick words. In kindergarten, first grade, and second grade, we learned a lot of trick words. In level three for foundations, the trick words are all the words you've already learned. We're just working on them again to make sure you really know them. So by the end of this year, you really want to be able to know how to read and spell our trick words. Now with our trick words, these are ones that we really have to memorize and become familiar with because we can't sound them out. They're just words that we need to know. So when we are looking at these words, we need to practice them as often as you can. And all of your third grade teachers have been giving you guys slides for you to practice these words. These are the words you need to know. The first word we're gonna look at is the word have, have. Now I can't tap that out, so we can just write it in the air with our finger, write it on your board, write it with your pencil have. I know this one. Have. Oh my goodness. Remember when we talked about this yesterday? V is with its buddy E. Have. All right. H-A-V-E. Have. What's the word? Good. The next word I want you to write is the word should. Should. I hope your paper is looking like mine. What's the word? Should, let's spell it. S-H-O-U-L-D, should. You spell it for me. Awesome job, guys. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you soon. Bye.